Bienvenidos and buenas tardes and welcome everyone to another exciting week of Academy. It is week two and day one we've got three back-to-back -back bangers, all best of twos for you today. My name is Mark Ralph Alexander Aramide and joining me on the cast is the legendary prophet and most fabled uh, Rift Herald taker in Mr. Alberto Crumbs Rengifo. How are you doing today, man? Good. Now that's a title I can get behind. I am still waiting with bated breath for when we're going to get a replay, replay files. I'm still going to push for a replay files <laughs> for Dignitas Renegade. The crew is in NA. We can talk about it. I think it'd work. <laughs> I would love for Pastry Time to go back in time and and review that play, and then <laughs> if there's any like commentary vods afterwards, that would be great. But um, I guess the the anticipation has caused my camera to freeze up. But I'm back now, and we're gonna be getting into the thick of things right for all of you lovely League of Legends fans today, as talked about it before. Three best of threes today, as we are going through. Uh, 100 Thieves Academy taking on TSM Academy, Immortals Academy versus CLG Academy, and then FlyQuest Academy versus Cloud9 Academy to close out the day. And just to make sure you guys all know, we also have another secondary stream going on over on twitch.tv slash nerdstreetlol, where you can catch the matchups between Dignitas and I believe it's uh, Evil Geniuses. And then we also have... Golden Guardians Academy, or I, I'm, I'm sorry, Dignitas and Team Liquid Academy, and then Golden Guardians and Evil Geniuses. But we gotta, gotta start right off the bat here, Crumbs, because TSM Academy kind of coming off a semi-rough week, able to pick up one win, whereas 100 Thieves Academy looking so dominant, even taking a win off of Cloud9 Academy as well. That's right, TSM had a rough start. That first game of the split really hurt them. They felt like they had a misread on the meta, but that's what happens. You show up and you try to put your best foot forward and it's untested. You're basing your entire strategy off of scrims. That's what TSM did that first day. It didn't work out. But the adaptation from one day to the next was so apparent. They really turned it around. They had a 1-1 against EG afterwards, but they looked completely different. Whereas 100 Thieves, I think, came out swinging. Their read on the meta seems to be more accurate, despite them having split that game against Cloud9. They had a lot of strong showings. Contracts, a 17-kill rumble game. I mean, he's just hard <laughs> smurfing in the jungle, but they are struggling a little bit when it comes to drafting compositions that are always going to be coherent in finishing out the game. Those Nidalees are the bane of so many teams. Doesn't matter how many kills you get, if you're not going to be able to team fight effectively, you just get outshined by a lot of things. So I think that both these squads are meeting today at a fairly good time with TSM clearly having some improvement from last week and 100 Thieves showing that they can be at the very least go 1-1 against our spring champions in Cloud9. So they're two strong teams. Yeah, and I think the other thing to consider is that even though 100 Thieves Academy, just based on the current rankings and standings in the team leaderboard right now, we would suspect that 100 Thieves should be the favored ones going into this matchup. You said it before, TSM did take a match off of EG Academy, who are currently sharing that second spot with 100 Thieves Academy at the moment. So it's not to say that TSM are completely out of the water for going into this matchup. It is a best of two. There is time for adaptation. And I think, you know, going back to what you pointed out, even though day one was pretty rough for TSM, being able to you know pick up that one win shows that there is plenty of room to improve and grow. Especially when you have a new jungler, right? The spring split was played with Babip. He's no longer the jungle for the squad. You got Hyper in the mix. And when so much of the games revolve around, can you play with your jungle around his camps, around the right. objectives, around his champion pool? Having that role be swapped out in the middle of the split is going to hurt you. So I think that's part of the growing pains that TSM went for. And that's why that first game was so rough compared to the second one. It's the first time you put this lineup to the test. It didn't work out. But so quickly can you adjust. And we've seen that they've already shown that they can do that. So I'm fully expecting a stronger integration with Hyper. And I hope that he goes head to head with Contra. Because there's a lot of hype around this player. At the very least, mechanically speaking, that's the hype that he brings to this table. And Contracts is a jungler that loves to play these high skill intensive junglers, the Nidalees, the Kindreds, the Lee Sins, if he can get them. So if we got a clash of these two players with similar styles, it's bound to give us some fireworks. 
Oh, for sure. And, and Hyper has already showed uh, quite a diverse champion pool within the first week. It's pulling out picks like the Olaf and the Volibear, in addition to Rumble and Diana, which are some of the picks that are more commonly seen. On the flip side, uh, for, for Kenvi and 100 Thieves Academy, I think one of the more interesting things that this team has pulled out is that Lulu Kindred composition, a flavor that I think the only other Academy team that has really experimented with this uh, strategy has been FlyQuest. Yeah, the mid lane support with a carry. It's the strategy that we usually saw around the bottom lane. Kogma, Lucian, Jinx, protect the carry, protect the president. That's the theme of it. But when the balance team is continuing to offer buffs towards Kindred, the champion is not only making it into the lanes, but pro players absolutely love this pick. She can get out of control so hard. And despite being a markman, marksman, her ultimate offers so much for a team fight, especially in dealing with hard engage, which is what a lot of teams are trying to draft right now. And if you can get ahead in the early game with the help of your assisting support, be it a Lulu or a Karma, you can just take over. The game is almost un unwinnable from the stranglehold that a Kindred can put you in. So I like seeing this pick, but it really requires a proficient Kindred to be so on point. The ultimate alone is a skill that takes so many games to master. It can win or lose you the game in a single fight. And that's not even to count the mark usage, how to play around your marks as a team, because we're talking about the importance of playing with your jungler and his camps, Kindred is the quintessential jungler for that. When the enemy camps get marked, sometimes as a laner, you're just gonna have to know when to give up CS to go help the Kindred out because she is the strategy that you have drafted. You already have a mid lane pick. So if 100 Thieves feels like Contracts is the jungler to do so, and in Academy, he certainly is, then this is a strategy that I think they can ride all the way till it starts getting banned because when it wins, it wins hard. Yeah, the 400 Thieves, if you're drafting Kindred, then you better be all in on the Kindred train. So if you if you want that far mid lane, sorry, buddy, you're giving up that prio. You're going over. You're going to make sure you're going to rotate over to make sure your Kindred is getting that mark on one of those opening crabs because it is quite essential. And I think, you know, both of us uh, being jungle mains in the past, we've had experience where if we don't get four marks by 20 minutes, we feel very, very not empowered as a kindred not having that extra 75 range but you know on the flip side for tsm uh, as we're talking about junglers for hyper i do want to kind of open up the floor about where hyper is coming from he is a player that has played a lot in the semi-pro and amateur scene for quite some time playing on teams like mirage uh, i believe radiance also at one point as well and he is someone that is very aggressive he loves to get into the faces of the, his enemy opponents. He will definitely go for invades. Uh, one pick that we haven't seen from him yet is actually the, the Lee Sin. And he is very well known in solo queue for, for that pick as well. Thankfully, Hauntzer and Sword have both put games in them. So a three-way flex between both of these teams obviously is going to be super contested as pick and bans has started here, Mr. Crumbs. Finally, yes. We have been waiting for the draft and already the teams have one week of seeing the meta develop. But the interesting thing is that Academy was the first team to actually play, at least to my knowledge, in the world in what they were going to show on 11.11. .11. So they had to be the ones stepping their foot into the pool. The first ones, they didn't see anybody else. They thought that what they played was the best strategy to get them a win. Yet now, one week later, we have... LCK, LPL, LCS, how many more regions have been playing around the world? So now the teams can start to fine tune their strategies with what they have seen other people play because there's some things that have come out that boy have been wonky. I mean, Chovy, LCK mid laner, arguably the best mid laner in the world, plays Volibear mid against Faker. This is something that you're like, what? Volibear mid? Are we really <laughs> in this timeline? So I think now the Academy teams in the best of two will feel even more inclined to experiment and in a split that has so many games, this is exactly the time to try it, especially early on. So I want to see if these two teams have been inspired by what the global leagues have shown us.
Right, and thankfully this is uh, the summer split for Academy where we have four times the amount of games this time around compared to the spring split. So if you want to limit test, if you want to try out different compositions and figure out your team identity even further, this is going to be the time to do it. You have plenty of room now for, for error and mistakes as all teams are going to be learning and Karma being first locked in crumbs. You were talking about this, especially as an answer to the, the ever growing threatening presence of the rumble. Yeah. So hundred thieves main loves karma. It put Abadage three games in a row on this pick. Now the thing is around the world, the karma has not been that useful in the mid lane. It has been prioritized as a support pick and it's been useful to deal with melee supports in the bottom lane so if you don't have a lot of all in the karma paired with an ezreal which is the combination that i'm keeping my eyes out for right now because her speed just adds to ezreal's obnoxious mobility even more crazy poke strong lane is the combination that is used to bully out bottom lanes but 100 thieves is the one team that has been really loving putting the karma in the mid lane so i want to see if ryoma is actually going to prioritize this and with the since i mean they're they're drafting reaper's homework here this is exactly what 100 <laughs> thieves main was playing it was karma mid since out in the jungle and so you just have a strong 2v2 because the mobility that zin offers to you combined with the extra spear range that he has now with his audacious charge is just bonkers so he can engage really well and gets extra protection from the karma and most importantly the item spike that karma will get in the mid game whether it's the ardent sensor which is the ideal one will buff up every single person so 100 thieves wants to do now is draft multiple champions that benefit from attack speed like the lee sin yeah, Mantra Inspire is hitting quite different on this patch here, Crumbs. And, you know, for Golden Glue, I imagine that there might be a meme later on where it's like, hey, hey uh, Reaper, can I copy your homework but not make it look like yeah. I, <laughs> I am? And it's like, all right, well, what, what's the change up going to be? As we're still yet to see whether this Karma is going to go mid lane for Rayoma or for Poom in the support role. There's still a Marksman waiting on the tables. Now, TSM Academy will start to look and target out some of the marksmen. We already saw that Varsh, Tristana, Lucian are off the table, Ezreal being added to the pool as well. Yeah, good ban on the Ezreal. It would have been, it was so obnoxious with the Karma combination, but also dealing with the Zoe. I think Zoe has a harder time dealing with these AD carries that have these mobility spells, because you can just get hit by a bubble in, it still allows you to shift away and put yourself in a position that makes it harder for her to actually catch you. So curious to see what TSM Academy thinks 100 Thieves wants to pair with this because they have a lot of data on what could be good with it. There's still so many other AD carries that you could pair with it, and it doesn't necessarily have to be focused around the Marksman. You can just buff up Bruisers and get a lot of value out of the Karma pick. She has been getting banned in earlier rotations. I really am interested to see 100 Thieves Academy value in this because by banning out the Olaf, they're trying to get rid of matchups that they think will severely hurt Kenvian. They're also targeting what Hyper has been playing recently, but if you've been playing a lot of solo queue, you really don't have a limited champion pool as a jungler. Right now is the time to experiment. I think there's still plenty of picks to go for. Rumble wouldn't be ideal. You already have a lot of magic damage. Having more physical would be very useful for you. Having a Zoe already. The last thing you want to encourage on the 100 Thieves team is a Mercury Tread stacking. So Hyper will look for a physical damage jungler. And wait a minute. No. What? <laughs> Throw another rock, Crumbs, because we're getting uh, a different AP jungler. It's not the Rumble, it's not the Diana, and I know you've already talked about, hey, guys, they can just kind of stack Mercury Treads for free, but Hyper, this is a pick that he played a lot during the 2020 Summer uh, Scouting Ground Circuit for, for Radiance. So, I mean, if you could get off the ground in the early game, maybe it will work, but I, I'm definitely there with you on the cautionary side and 100 Thieves Academy straight up lock in Jinx Braum. Yeah, all, so much auto attack benefit from this. Braum and Karma are going to be amazing at buffing up Jinx and offering peel. But see, the Talia as a team, as a 2v2, isn't actually that good, right? You're not, you don't have that much 
setup for her in the mid lane. The bubble, people will take cleanse. You do have that option, but there is one play that revolves around the first pick for TSM that I think is exactly where they want to look. The Renekton Talia combination. You don't have Renekton Middle League, you have Renekton Talia. It's the same idea. Stun into seismic shove, so much burst. I think that this strategy just speaks to me as let's just pick on tenacity in the top lane. Even the least hint won't be able to avoid this. So if they can snowball through the top lane and have Hanser be an absolute menace, if tenacity doesn't get the ball rolling, this team will be entirely reliant on Luger and getting buffed up. So if nobody else starts feeding, TSM has set up a good advantage in the top lane. It's a strategy that revolves around two champions. We've seen it work so much, and I want to see if 100 Thieves can actually sniff it out, though, because it's obvious that it's coming from the draft, but can you actually <laughs> path around it and defer it when it happens is another story. Uh, yeah, execution is always, you know, the difference maker when it comes to after seeing the picks in draft, because things can always pan out differently. Just because you lock in a lease doesn't mean that you're going to guarantee to win the early game. And it's the same for here as the Talia Renekton combo. We saw it in, in patches ago, how dominating and terrifying a 2v2 it can be. Uh, the other thing that's uh, actually interesting about this Talia pick into majority of 100 Thieves, uh, or at least this is in Zhao and Lee Sin Duo, they have a lot of mobility spells, and that is perfectly countered by the, the Unraveled Earth from Talia. So anytime you want to go in there and threaten Lee Sin, it's like, hey, if you're, if you're going to dash out, you're going to take a lot of damage on the back end of that. So either you're burning your flash or you're going to die. Well, you're going to have to be mechanically highly skilled to actually pull that off because that was the danger that I see with the Talia, with the Zoe. Against Zin and Karma, the 2v2 is just going to be potentially too dangerous because Kenvi mm -hmm. with the speed up from Ryoma can just move so fast, can zoom onto Hyper and really close the gap in this. So the 2v2 from TSM, if they can fight early before any magic damage comes out while they have enough burst, they're going to be fine. But if you start letting Ryoma and Kenvi get strong get a few levels especially at level six once kenby has his ultimate that will protect him from all this range damage then it's gonna get really tricky this is how 100 thieves main had won many games before this 2v2 once it gets the ball rolling is nearly unbeatable because zin will just be able to jump you he's so efficient at closing the gap against even the longest range marksman right now which is what makes him so much more viable before that spear change has really benefited him and here's 100 thieves going to take advantage of their early game power that's already two wars that they've cleared but they don't catch hyper starting here he's on blue side and we saw this from 100 Thieves Academy last week as well. Akenbi going for these aggressive invades, whether it was a delayed invade off the pathing that we saw in the Kintra game or in the later games where he just straight up brute forces his way into the enemy jungle starting level one. And because he's going to get that red buff, not only is it going to deter Hyper from pathing towards the top side, it also potentially saves Tenacity from getting ganked by Tully in the early game. And the interesting thing here is that 100 Thieves only now sets up a ward to spot out if Hyper wants to take the red. Notice how Ryoma actually pushed the wave and then set up vision around the entrance to his red side jungle so that Hyper does not get to go counter the buff. And that will actually get Kenvi a pretty nice advantage in this early game. They have an idea of where Hyper has started, so the jungle is effectively tracked and will be kept behind. It's going to be interesting to see how Hyper actually recovers from this position because it's going to be a new for him. You're just starting out as a member of TSM squad and here you are getting invaded. Maybe looking for a gank instead, yep. Sword will have to set up for us a bubble here if Hyper cannot land the Seismic Shove, but Bubble will land and a flash comes out. Seismic Shove will follow up. Is it enough? Auto attack damage. The rocks! Even through the shield, it's not enough, but Ryan will be able to save his life. Really smart path in there out of Hyper. Knows that he doesn't have any camps in the top side. Knows that even going for the red buff is going to be dangerous because the team will collapse onto him. So instead, he finds an opportunity for a gank. Oh, he could be in trouble. 
Oh my goodness, Kemi with the aggression just flashing right into Hyper, trades his own and forces Hyper back. Yeah, that's absolutely it. He's just gonna trade a flash for flash. He's gonna be happy with that one though because this ensures that Hyper is even later in his recall and won't be able to contest the Scuttle Crabs. Now that's gonna be two Scuttles going over to Kenvi and Hyper has yet to catch even the top side of his jungle. So he's just gonna go for the doubles now, but Kenvi is so far dominating this side of the map. And if he can just take these two camps and know exactly where Hyper is at, despite Ryoma not having Flash, I think he'll be able to keep him up. And Crumbs, look at this. Like, Kenvi hasn't done a majority of his own camps. It's just been the two camps in the red buff quadrant for Hyper, the one Gromp. And as soon as he saw action was going down in the mid lane, he's like, don't worry, Ryoma, I am on my way, brother. And he comes in, forcing Hyper out. Now he has his entire jungle to safely clear out and get a, a huge lead on the Hyper as... Some trading in the bottom lane. I don't think anything more will erupt from it. Yeah, it's fine. The bot lane is for 100 Thieves is so good at just playing defensively right now. Braum is phenomenal at keeping you safe. Ooh, what a hook, though! Oh, dredge line from your son is going to land on the Luger, forcing the flash. Ignite comes down as well. Heal was popped by Luger as well. And so far, Cody's son and your son, we didn't get a chance to talk about this a lot as actually three man dive into making on the tenacity. We talked about how deadly of combo it is. Stun into Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Seismic Shelf will land tenacity, taking a lot of damage on the back land. And it's first blood for Sword. And the three members of TSM are going to try to make it out. But Ryoma with the collapse oh. can be trying to turn to one back, but he's not able to turn it out. Double for Sword. Oh, that is huge. And they're gonna... Oh, no! Don't TP there! Whoa. He's dead again. Uh, Tenacity, you're playing with fire, my dude. You don't have any friends. You don't have any backup. Teleporting right into the thick of the fray. What? Hyper? No. Okay, the turn dive. Oh, no. This is... Ah, uh, can we... Can we get a uh, remake? <laughs> okay, it's actually not that bad. It's actually not that bad because TSM still denies a ginormous amount of CS to the Lee Sin. Doesn't he TP? He's going to lose all of that wave. 40 CS to 22. The misplay there was actually... I misplay, outplay. Tenacity waited for the Sleepy Trouble Bubble to almost trigger and then he ward hopped because Hyper didn't wait for the stun of Zoe to connect, mm. then he actually missed the seismic shove. So they didn't layer their stuns properly, and that bought enough time for Tenacity to actually wiggle around while everybody else tanked those turret shots. So a little bit of a miscommunication there out of TSM, and frankly, I can't blame them. It was a ridiculous move for Tenacity to TP back here, but we're going to take a look at how this actually played out, because this is the first instance of it as Hanser goes in for the first time, and while the Lee has Flash, he's expecting that Xin Zhao will be able to follow him up. Doesn't have the damage there. Karma is just making it here. Will not be able to assist with the Flash Mantra, and then can be he knows he's dead. He's just trying to go straight into Hyper and see how Sword Path is away, because it's bonkers that Tenacity wants to TP in here, but then the Sleepy trouble bubble and there it is the seismic shove gets dodged out by tenacity and that's what keeps him alive had that hit it would be an easy cleanup almost all three members died so it could have been a disaster but still that is why sword left you just think no one in the right mind would tp here because with the proper execution he's just giving another kill for free like you said, Crumbs, even though uh, a couple people died in the, the turret dive, the damage was done to Tenacity. He had just teleported in, losing on and out on a massive amount of gold and XP. He's able to rectify a little bit of the, the lead that Haunter is able to gain in terms of XP. Caught up in levels, but so far, 10 CS lead will give Hanser a slight edge in this lane as now he is level 7 up on Tenacity. Yeah, he's gonna be fine. He has to play safe here as they suspect that Xin Zhao is back to the top side of the map as Talia is also back here. And now they will see him and confirm both the red buff and the Krux have been taken. We'll see how Hyper plays around this, but he's gonna have really good opportunities to play with Sword because he was the recipient of all three of those kills in the top one. If you ever were afraid of a Zoe, seeing her have three kills in the first 10 minutes of the game while nobody else has picked up anything is a really scary proposition. So Sword will have to carry the beginning of this game until the rest of the team can catch back up, especially Cody, who's having a good old time farming back in the bot lane. And his Kai'Sa will be instrumental in actually picking off 
these carries because you want to combo that sleepy trouble bubble with more damage it's not gonna likely be enough from zoe to burst somebody down but if you can have the kaisa follow up swords aggressive bubbles that's when you'll have a really strong and deadly zoe as tsm switches their bottom lane to the top side going for a five-man rip herald play and it's not going to cost them much because you see jinx and bromp just base so there's nobody hammering away at any plates Cody and your son made the early rotation to pick up this Rift Herald along with the rest of TSM Academy. Like you said, Luger and Kuma are a little late to the party as they're just coming back now onto the Rift. This is going to give TSM a huge advantage in being able to get some structured damage whenever they find an opportunity to lay down that Rift Herald. Something that we did miss is the first Dragon of the game was taken by TSM Academy in the aftermath of that whatever you want to call it happen top lane as uh oh man they are just really committed to snowballing concert right now and they absolutely should we saw it from the draft this combination is very deadly and it's not like it gets weaker through the later stages of the game their mixed damage is what allows them to continue to flourish as a 2v2 so they can just continue to pick on tenacity as long as they know where the rest of the team is at they'll base and play it slow but you can count on TSM to continue to pressure through Hyper and Hauntzer and 100 Thieves will second guess themselves if they actually want to answer this because they know they're fighting a losing battle. Check this out, Crumbs. Gore Drinker already picked up the first Mythic of the game at just under 10 minutes here. So Hauntzer's already a monster on this Renekton. And I think this is the point of the game where even if Kenvi and Tenacity try to 2v1, fighting a Hauntzer with that Dominus, with that Gore Drinker, is going to be way more difficult than they anticipate. Yeah, and you don't want to be playing to those strengths. 100 Thieves here is just counting on Luger. The Lee Sin, the Karma, these are not carry picks. They offer utility for setting up plays or buffing up somebody else. Same thing with the Xin Zhao. He's not sufficiently far ahead right now that he could just hard carry these fights. So they will rely on Luger, which, I mean, he is set up to succeed with the rest of what their composition is designed to do. But he's not farming as well as Cody san but that shouldn't mean much the jinx once she gets her mythic item will be really relevant in this game so 100 thieves as long as they just protect their jungle allow their team to farm and scale up just needs to win one team fight where the jinx pops off and that's all they need to claw back into this game and prevent it from getting out of hand because as long as you can protect the president of jinx it doesn't matter how fed <laughs> the crocodile is and get down, Mr. President. Luger is going to be the focal star for 100 Thieves as we get into the mid and late game. Not to take anything away from Kenvi as he is orienting himself for a more damage uh, heavy spike in that Divine Sunder Rush, I believe he's going for, which is which is a difference than the the tanks and Zao's that we have seen in prior weeks. So, and if, if you've been watching Kenvi ever since 100 Thieves Next, this guy rarely goes tank builds even if it is uh more appropriate oh, oh, oh right oh, this is this is this is quite bad sir I, I don't even know how to appropriately call this one three angles ganked from all sides and right is <laughs> totally dead yeah no way out you didn't even need the Renekton, actually. So that just shows you that TSM's damage is really high right now. The Sorcerer Shoes from Hyper is enough to start to snowball this game. And finding that early kill onto the Karma right before Dragon, it's just a free objective. You're not even going to get Ryoma to TP down here. Nobody on 100 Thieves is in a position to do so. And the Talia pick is being worked around beautifully. I thought that it might have some issues if it didn't get ahead early game. But TSM is finding absolutely avenue after avenue despite 100 Thieves having invaded her and knowing exactly where her jungle route was going to be they have made the most of the situation and the action doesn't stop stopwatch is going to be popped by your son McKenzie is here for the reinforcements they lock him down into the jinx traps your son trying to flash out but there's no way out Cody's son forced to use both of his summoners as well as Kenley was ready to run him down 
That's exactly what 100 Thieves need. They need this bottom lane to get ahead. And the fact that Jinx is going to be autoing this turret can get her even more gold. These plays will be so valuable. It's only a single one, though. They don't want to overextend in the bot lane. But anything they can get is exactly what they need to get back into this game. The Jinx needs to get fed. Yeah, the Braum didn't get the kill, but it's better than absolutely no kill in the bottom lane. The rest of TSM Academy, we already talked about how massive of an advantage that they've been able to get for themselves at the beginning of this game. Haunter being particularly far ahead in the matchup against Lee Sin at the moment. We haven't really seen the influence come through fruition apart from the mid lane gank, but as you pointed out, Crumbs, during the, the fight, Haunter wasn't necessarily even needed there, so uh, we're going to have to see how well Haunter can extend this lead that TSM Academy have built up for him. Yeah, the Renekton, you know, you want to extend those leads around him, but then at some point he's just going to have to team fight, and that's what we'll judge Hauntzer's Renekton for is. How well can he transfer his team fighting prowess from the laning phase? Because he's got a lot of gold here, but if you just dash in and die, it's not going to be very useful. And 100 Thieves' composition is actually pretty good at kiting away these kinds of champions like Renekton that have some relatively short gap closers that won't be able to chase repeatedly against a sped up Karma uh, Rom that keeps peeling for her and this is just a disengage from 100 Thieves and this is the issue oh wait a minute bubble catches he's got the unbreakable so be able to mitigate some damage can be trying to block his fellow support out Boom does have to throw down the Glacial Fissure, though, just so that they can get out. TSM Academy get to win this blue buff. Yeah, that's a, just a denial. Karma doesn't necessarily need this. She's going to be able to push up this wave just fine. So they're just exerting their dominance. They know they're strong. They know they can take whatever they want as long as they have the correct members. And even though jungle and support from 100 Thieves are right there, you're face checking against Renekton. That is not a 2v2 you're gonna be winning, especially when the Zoe can back you up so quickly. And as long as they can continue to give up some objectives on one side of the map, but what they gain is a free farming Luger, I think 100 Thieves is happy. This Rift Herald is just gonna hurt their mid lane turret to defend the game. But again, all eggs go into the Luger basket. This is gonna be your win ticket. Your win con is a single member. It's the danger of these kinds of compositions. But Luger has shown that when given the resources, he can step up to the plate. He has the mechanical prowess to be the aggressive jinx. Yet sometimes though, sometimes Rafa, when some of these AD carries get given too much protection, they may not be used to how aggressive it's expected for them to play. <laughs> You're playing a little bit safe, and suddenly now your team is telling you to continue to go in, to forego all the mechanical muscle memory that you've instilled into playing as an AD carry. So it's often a difficulty that's overlooked in playing these kinds of compositions. So I want to see if Luger can actually show off with this because when the 100 Thieves main squad won, the game felt like it was over before the AD carry got to be so buffed up by the supports. I mean, he's playing Jinx for a reason. The passive says it all. He's got to get excited and if 100 Thieves are not there to back him up, then they're not going to be playing the composition fully to its strength. So Luger is going to just... It's all about those trust fall exercises where it's like, hey, I'm going to go forward. You got me, right? You got me? Yeah, I got you. I got, th I got you with the shield. I'm going to jump in front of you, give you a shield as well with the Unbreakable. Kemi's going to jump in, use the Crescent Guard to try to block out any range damage as well, any stray uh, Sleepy Trouble Bubbles or Paddle Stars that are coming his way. It's all going to be about how well 100 Thieves can protect Luger. And if Luger has that confidence and trust to be able to just pop off in these fights. But third dragon is about to spawn in the next minute crumbs and i imagine that is where if 100 thieves don't fight for that dragon this it is going to put tsm at a huge lead giving them soul point as well yeah tsm is really mimicking what their main team also does by crafting a lot around team fighting this is a tp it's gonna be defended but hyper Yurson, what yeah knock up onto your son he's really locked down in place and luger gets the first reset off of that super mega death rocket can be Quite low on HP, but he's able to walk himself out. And this is where the strength of the kiting that you mentioned already, Crumbs, is coming into play. Thanks to Rioma, they're able to use the Mantra Inspired to 
pick better battle lines as they're now waiting out the dominance from Hanser popped a little too early. Now Hanser doesn't have that ultimate to be able to go in and dive into the fight. Still probably has that Gore Trigger for an active, but Hundred Thieves have the advantage to secure this dragon away from TSM. Yeah, it's a 5v4. TSM has no business trying to fight this if they want to continue to go onto this. But they're just poking away, hoping something happens. Maybe Under Thieves would have been enticed to linger around, but they know that your son is making his way back because that face check did cost the dragon for TSM. He wanted to protect the teleport from his top laner. Hanser was teaching into the mid lane. He wanted to block for him, but little did he know, he was face checking into multiple hundred these members. And even though he's got that aftershock, he does not even have a single item completed beyond the plate cap. So he's so easy to take down. He just got blown up and the kill went over Luger. So that worked out really well for TS, for hundred thieves. It does. Not only deny TSM the potential soul point for that Infernal Dragon, but also is starting to allow 100 Thieves to s slowly come back in this game. The gold lead is still an advantage for TSM Academy. And notice how 100 Thieves, they have been tactically playing around the weaknesses of their current state right now. It's Tenacity might find an opportunity on the Haunter. Ward hop into the kick for the end second. Haunter is nowhere to go. The Crocodile has been taken down. Oh, it might not stop here though. Good slow. Yursan using the dredge line to try to find an escape route. Cody Sun also there in case things get a little too hairy, but oh. Flash is coming out. Oh my god, 100 Thieves Academy! They found a window back into the game, and they are not stepping off the gas as they just run through the mid lane turret, walking and looking for one more tenacity, flashing and taking down Yursan. Crumbs, that's four members off of TSM! They just chained a single kill on Hanser into three more of TSM. A single crocodile get taken down and the dominoes just fell for TSM. Multiple members were rotating from the mid lane down to help out Hanser when the play happened. But that just lined them up, 400 Thieves, to take them down. And the big play here was Hanser committing his double dashes. Once his mobility spells were down, yeah, he's got flash, but there's no way out. Once that TP came out, it was so easy. And then you've got two members caught in the river just trying to get out of here, but you don't underestimate the movement speed and chase potential that the Zin and the Karma can offer. Beautiful knock-up prediction from Poom there with his Glacial Fisher catches multiple members on the escape and then the rest of the squad can just chase. So many kills going over to 100 Thieves. They just turned this game on its head. It's back to even, but you can feel the momentum being entirely there. So that's three fights in a row going their way multiple objectives as well the gold bounties are now on their own squad the karma is clearly showing the power that she has and buffing up the rest of the squad and you can see now they feel confident enough to just five man siege this and go for the mid lane turret Monster doesn't have teleport so he can't join the fight if things get a little spooky for tsm academy but they're just seceding this turret as this will allow 100 Thieves Academy to fight for uh, larger map control now knocking down this mid turret. And when we look back 10 minutes ago, Crumbs, TSM Academy, they were the ones with the pressure. They were the ones making the moves on the map. And 100 Thieves Academy, they said, that's fine. We will give you control of this top side of the map. You can take the blue buff, you can take the Gronk, you can take the Wolves, whatever. But notice the patience that came out from this squad until finally, as soon as the window of opportunity to come back into this game came up, they instantly jumped on it. Yeah, and now they are not going to let go. This is already a full build karma at this point. You've got the Ardent Sensor. That's exactly what you want to buff up your AD carry with a Hurricane, mind you. So there is a lot of power on 100 Thieves. What they're trying to do is just remain grouped and fight 5v5. If Kenby can just go in with Coombs shield as protection it's just gonna look at it he just goes into five people uh, Hanser has to, to back off of this one glacial vision will split up the fight and look at tenacity finding hyper with the kick is gonna put him in a bad spot popping the stopwatch trying to buy as much time as he can but he's gonna get eviscerated double for kenvi 100 thieves academy just out of nowhere turned the game on its head off of the fight we just saw a couple minutes ago and they're not letting go 
DSM needs to start respecting what 100 Thieves can do with this composition. Anybody that is in range of the Sins out will get immediately jumped on. He has so much protection from the Brahm and the Karma. He is not afraid. He's very strong with the Divine Sunderer already completed. And that's the opportunity they, they just need. As long as Sin can go in and the Jinx is remotely in range, they're going to go for it. TSM needs to know that that's going to happen and be in a position to either immediately counter engage on to Luger or just collapse right away. So Hanser is going to be face checking in here alongside Yurisan, but he doesn't care. He's going into multiple members, the Unbreakable and the Sin Ultimate, keep him alive. And then the carries are in the back line. It's a freebie of a pick there. 400 B. They're lucky they get a shutdown on the back end on the side of TSM since the fight was technically split up. One in the banana brush and then the other one in the dragon pit. But you see now that 100 Thieves is really afraid of what 100 Thieves or what TSM can do. Uh, Talia Wall will try to split oh, him up, no. but Hyper, he doesn't have the follow up. He just gives a freebie over to 100 Thieves Academy and they were not with him on the play. Your son also having nowhere else to run. Dredge Line is not going to save you this time, buddy. Without the jungle for TSM Academy, a five member strong for 100 Thieves, I imagine Baron is the next play. Oh, they want even more good Gale Force out of code against the Glacial Fisher. But yeah, you just go for this objective right away. A bit of a misplay there out of Hyper, though. Using that Weaver's Wall to go into the range of 100 Thieves. They're going to go for this objective. And Zoe does not have Smite. So the opportunity for a steal is just not available. Those days are over. And it's just going to put 100 Thieves so much closer to victory. This composition feels like has gotten out of control and TSM is just dumbfounded at how to deal with it. So many times they're just throwing members at 100 Thieves but they have no idea how to actually get to the back line. Their tanks can barely withstand the front line. And something that, as we'll be able to see in this play, you know, watch the Zin Zhao as well. Anytime that this Crescent Guard comes up, it is just impossible for TSM to do any damage. Yeah. Well, once Talia just donates herself, though, there is no chance at coming back there. So that was a bit of an unfortunate situation, really. <laughs> <And> <laughs> Nothing oopsie. else to say, right? That's just a, a, a misplay. You would never want to be putting your body in there as Talia, not in those kinds of plays. I think the wall was very useful in potentially zoning these members out because there's not a lot of mobility out of the main carries. The Karma and the Jinx are not able to get over a wall. Yeah, Brahm, Zin, Lee Sin can do it, but as long as you can lock down Luger, the rest of the team is fairly easy to deal with. TSM Academy, they're starting to see their lead slip away as Under Thieves have climbed. About oh. a small 2,000, but they might have found an opportunity to cut off the rest of the members of 100 Thieves. It's just Ryoma and Kenby all by their lonesome. Tenacity's coming in with a teleport. If Kenby can buy enough time for everyone to come in, they might be able to get out of this alive. But Cody Sun has routed off Ryoma, gets a shutdown. Super Mega Death Rocket comes from across the map. Gets a bunch of burst damage, allows for Hyper to be picked up in exchange for 100 Thieves Academy. It's a one for one. It's a single kill off the Baron, but now 100 Thieves is here ready to shove. They're going to get at least this tier 2 turret. I don't know if they're going to be able to push for the inhibitor tower, though. Karma does have teleport, so she can rejoin the squad if they want to do something else on the map. But looking for those opportunities, despite having the Baron, is a great way to deal with the situation that's in front of TSM. Anytime the enemy team has the Baron, they're always going to be interested in sieging to maximize that value. So if you can distract them, and get a team fight that just goes exactly even, it's a win in your book. So TSM does a fine job at slowing down the impending doom that is 100 Thieves right now. But they need to find so much more than that. It feels maybe too late to have started looking for these proactive plays as the reasons for 100 Thieves to be split up are almost zero. They just need to group as five and it's gonna be nearly impossible for TSM to actually win these fights if they don't immediately catch out Luger. Right, and because a lot of the strength of TSM Academy's composition is reliant off of picks, how are you supposed to make picks as everyone is always there at the same time as Kenby and Poom? Might have found Hanser onto the back end, but the rest of the 100 Thieves Academy members have to walk around the long way. Tenacity is still splitting on the bottom side of the map, but four members against five, they're still able to keep TSM Academy at bay. They're fending off Hanser, forcing him to go towards the top side of the map, and this siege should still be available for 100 Thieves. 
Yeah, I think they got two turrets from this. They might even want to go for more, though. As long as they stay grouped, there's no need to go for anything else. But TSM just can't deal with them, especially with the Zin. He's just running in, Krubs. He doesn't care. And Tenacity is dealing just fine with Hyper onto the bottom side of the map. Oh, but a stopwatch play is going to allow Cody Sun to pick up a shutdown onto Tenacity. But 100 Thieves take that window to knock down the mid inhibitor turret. That shutdown slows down 100 Thieves. It was, you know, it has, there was a chance that maybe Hyper <laughs> doesn't actually press the Zanyas, but maybe thought that he would be either too slow or didn't even know that he had it. He would have needed to base and potentially regroup with the Weaver's Wall. That will slow down 100 Thieves' impending onslaught. And the more I look into this composition and how it has played out, Luger feels more and more like the bait with all the gold that Kenby has gotten just in that fight in the top lane that resulted in a pick for TSM. This Sin is just a monster. He is so difficult to deal with. Once he pops the ultimate, there's nobody that can get in range of him to actually mow him down. The Kaisa, yes, yeah, she's strong, but as Kenby pops his ultimate, he's almost unkillable. TSM's just gonna rush this with the Weaver's Wall, but it will fade. 100 Thieves can engage. Kenby is not able to make the steal happen. It's secured by TSM. They're now at sole point. The question is, can they get out alive? Because I don't know if you really want to take the oh. five on five. Sword is not going to get the memo on that one. Has nowhere else to run. And now TSM Academy might get routed off here. Where's the escape route from? Because this is going to be very difficult for them to get out of harm's way. Boom, flashing in. Trying to get the, the glacial fissure stacks down onto Cody's son. Massive seismic shove from Hyper trying to buy as much time. But Cody's son has been shut down. And Hundred Thieves Academy find the window to run through the rest of the members. Only Haunter is left alive, but he might not even be enough to defend the Nexus. If they can just stay grouped here, the Karma is teleporting to the top lane. 100 Thieves can go for multiple inhibitors. There's a 20 second death timer on Cody's son. It's just going to be sword. If they can block the Paddle Star, they're going to get so much damage down into the base of TSM. They'll play it safe, just get a single kill and wait for the reset of the Baron. They're already so far ahead. It's clear that TSM just have no way of dealing with this comp. Three burst champions in the solo lanes and their damage is already enough for the Zin to just shrug it off. They can't burn past them, let alone get to the back line. 100 Thieves, I'm expecting fully a Karma ban for this next game because this team has just been practicing and it's seen it so much that they're doing such a good job with it. Watch Kenvi and how much damage he tanks. Full Paddle Star doesn't care. The Braum can peel for him. There's more shields and he can just charge in mindlessly and there's nothing that can happen to him. Karma is just going to be autoing away, but guess what? He just popped the ultimate. He's so safe and buying time for the rest of the team. He does a lot of damage with the Divine Sunder of us, Karma Sensor, and the Wit's End. This comp is really starting to show up. And we are back to the action, Crumbs. Your son is going to be able to dredge line himself out of danger. So we're going to try to throw some Paddle Stars into the mix, but like you said, this composition for 100 Thieves has scaled me on the point of being able to deal with this Zoe. If it's not a squishy member, the Glitch official lands on a sword, flashing into the wall. That's going to be an easy setup for Luger to get some resets. Now looking for the Crocodile. Hans are flashing away, trying to buy some distance away from Tenacity, but he dashes back on in as Kenby is charging into the back line. Super Mega Death Rocket will land from Luger. It's a double, looking for more, looking for potentially a triple, but Kenby says, no, no, no. Give me some of that cash. Give me some of that money as 100 Thieves will get the ace and close out game one. He just keeps going, this Kenby. There's just no stopping. Just go, go, go. Luger barely got some shields <laughs> in that because Kenby needed them all to continue the charge. 100 Thieves showing that this homework was the right answer all along. The Karma, the Zin combination pays off wonderfully, and even Luger ends up with a 700 gold bounty at the end. So 100 Thieves showing that they've got multiple strategies that involve playing around Kenvi. It looked really good here. Not just the Kindred with the Lulu earlier, but this time around with the Zin and the Karma. Hey man, utility, enchanter mage, and then 
you got a Omega carry, whether it's the Kindred, as you pointed out, or this time the Zin Zhao. And, you know, the funny thing is, is that, you know, as we mentioned before during the broadcast, Zin Zhao's have been normally building more of a tankier route. But with the introduction of Divine Sunder on this patch and even the, the creative route of going down Wits and Spirit's Visage, he, he's stacking so much magic resist because he knows that he can deal with the physical damage dealer in, in the Kai'Sa just by popping that ultimate and negating any range damage. Yeah, the, the Zin is just a really useful engage tool because that's what the composition is lacking. The normal peel comps just require the enemy to go into you. But when you have a Zin that can be so aggressive, then you kind of solve those issues. And guess what? I'm blurry. I'm very blurry. <laughs> I think that uh, composition in the game put TSM out of focus as well. They were so dazed <laughs> nice. by the, the mid game. Oh, man. Uh, hopefully, TSM Academy, they did show some prowess and strength in the early game plan towards the top side of the map. That's just the, the execution of being able to translate that advantage through the mid game is where they were lacking a bit. But it is a best of two as we should be getting ready for a game two and after i want to say after this break ladies and gentlemen so we'll turn off that browser we'll be right back <laughs> 